Howdy, y'all. Welcome back. Thank you for being here. Happy New Year. Would you like to take a trip with me 160 years into the past into India? This is one of the most detailed videos that I have made in recent months. We're going to take a deep dive into the very first ever photographs taken in India. What you'll see today is honestly nothing short of breathtaking. The architecture here is second to none. It's remarkably finely woven into the current narrative if you want to dive into that. However, we're just going to be looking at these photographs and their descriptions today. When we look at the narrative, though, I will mention, we never truly have the ability to question what we're seeing exactly. There's always some sort of plausible deniability that's given inside the history books. But I'd like to take a step back from this currently accepted narrative and browse through the first photographs of India without any bias. From Calcutta to the massive burial mausoleums that we find all throughout India, from these really awesome stupas to equally impressive forts which appear to dwarf the competition, especially when we consider the time period that all of this was said to be created, the sprawling landscapes of India are only convoluted further by the first images. When we look at the narrative, it truly paints a dichotomy. We see well-established and often ancient-looking structures, and when we compare them to the mostly empty, mostly lifeless, and sometimes overgrown cities which surround them, it honestly leaves a lot for us to question. Now, for lack of a better term, these photographs make it feel like we've stepped into this time machine and we're looking at something that we shouldn't be able to. I wanted to focus on India from the 1850s onward into the beginning of the 20th century, but one thing I came to find when I tried to narrow down my search with almost certainty is that a lot of India was seemingly renovated during the mid to late 1800s, resulting in the images from roughly 1880 onward, appearing to depict cities and towns of India, which themselves appear entirely different in the first photographs from nearly 30 years earlier. So those first images, the images from 1860 through roughly 1870 are what we will be looking at today. This collection all of these will be taken by one Samuel Bourne and I believe we can see throughout these images the greatest dichotomy between architecture and people in the old world the people who at the time of these images are tasked with reinvigorating and re-inhabiting and living within these ancient walls and these buildings which appear to have not been lived in for a long time we can see a landscape Really, the entirety of India appears to be dotted and riddled with these massive, yet beautiful and ancient and seemingly misunderstood structures. From the fort in Agra, we can see nearly impenetrable walls which, for hundreds of years, stood as a testament to the abilities of ancient Indian architects. The world as a stage, we look at it and we can see India coming to the forefront shortly after the abundance of these images were produced and then distributed around the world. For me, these are some of the most revealing images historically that I have ever seen. Comparatively speaking, these are very similar to the first images of Egypt, which we have focused on in months past. The absolute attention to detail in this architecture associated with these buildings, with these forts, with these mausoleums, and the sheer immense nature of their construction Mixed with the mathematical proponents, the exactness, which appears on nearly every structure that we will look at today, it's without question why the architecture of ancient India is so important. Take into consideration the research we've done on the origin of man, of written language, and often we will find ties that pull us back directly to India. I believe we must ask, when were these structures abandoned before being absorbed into the new kingdoms that made up India? These images that we have looked at today, I believe truly speak for themselves.